everyone. Welcome back to the Marine Lab. Let me just right, let me give some time for people to show up, like always. But this is our last live. Um, come on in, people. <laughs> gonna give a few Marissa's here. Oh Marissa's here. Anne is here. Hello. Welcome to our last live stream. So sad. Good morning Meredith. Good morning. <laughs> awesome. Yeah welcome back everyone. Yeah. Hi, Hi Kate. Kate. <laughs> we'll give it maybe a, another minute until the restaurant. Oh hi grandma. <laughs> Hi, Olivia's grandma. <laughs> Hi, Quinn, top fam. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Great. Yes, yeah, Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, we're really sad. This is our last live stream, but it was really fun. Yeah. To connect with all of you, show us what we do in our day to day life. <laughs> yeah, Great. so I guess we'll start. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, welcome back to the Marine Lab. I'm Rebecca. And I'm Olivia. <laughs> I'm Marissa. Sorry. <laughs> and so, like we just said a million times, this is our last live stream. Mm -hmm. And we have a really fun one planned for you guys. We already have gone through all the projects we do here in the lab, so now we're just gonna wrap it up, kind of touch on each project, the data we found in 2020 and how it relates, or how it compares to 2019. And um, then we're gonna have a trivia session that includes some prizes, so stay mm -hmm. tuned for that. That's gonna be really fun to see um, how in tune you guys were to all the past live streams and this one. And then lastly, we'll have a question and answer session with us. If you guys have any um, questions about <clears throat> us mm -hmm. or the job, our futures, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, stay tuned till the end. Yeah. And then also, Meredith Elliott, our lab manager, will be in the comments answering questions as we mm -hmm. go along. Um, we'll try to get to all of them. But, yeah, so keep an eye out for her responses yeah. there. So we're going back to our first live stream where we talked about the California lease turn and the fish that they drop. So the California lease turn, if you remember, brings back whole fish to feed their chicks right here. They're very cute. There's a the chick right there. Yeah, so sometimes when these birds are bringing back um, these fish to feed their chicks, they, you know, the chicks maybe won't eat it or they get, the adults get in a fight and they drop the fish on the ground and then they won't be eaten. So Point Blue biologists working with the US Fish and Wildlife will go around the colony in Alameda and they'll collect all these drop fish that are all around the colony um, as a part of a long-term monitoring project. And so, so when the fish arrive back here, we clean off the sand and then we bake them in an oven and then we identify, measure, and weigh each fish that's brought back here. And so for 2020 results, our most common fish were the silver sides. And so these are part of the family Anthenopsidae. Um, these are the most common by number and also by weight. Um, these include fish like top smelt, California grunion, and jack smelt. And then the longest fish that was found is the northern anchovy, which was uh, runner up, for, so second place by number. So the longest fish and also the shortest fish were both the northern anchovy. So this is obviously a juvenile and this is an adult. Um, and yeah, these were both found actually the same, um, on the same date. And then the widest fish that was found was this walleye surf perch. So as you can see, it's probably about twice as wide as this anchovy. And that's probably why it was dropped on the ground because you know the chicks have these little mouths and it probably couldn't um, eat this whole fish. And then another really cool thing was this year we got some fish from a black skimmer colony in Hayward. And uh, um, this was actually the largest drop fish that we, we found in 2020, which was this California grunion. And as you can see, it's like probably twice as big as the ones that are found in the least turn colonies. So this was really cool to find. 
And then some other surprising things we found in 2020 where we found a couple of shrimp and then we found also a sand lance, which I've never seen before. And then sadly, we found this guy. So this is a fishing lure that was found and it looks a lot like their prey. So you can imagine if the tern probably picked this up and was trying to feed it to its chick, which luckily didn't eat it because it would be very bad for them. But yeah, it's a sad reminder yeah. of the pollution in the ocean. But um, yeah, and then also when the biologists are going around picking up these dropped fish, they're um, collecting feces or poop <laughs> and pellets or um, their puke. They're p scooping them up with like a little spoon and they put them in baggies and they bring us um, these samples to analyze um, the diets of these birds as well. So in these samples, we are looking for things like scales. Um, so like fingerprints, they can tell us what species of fish this bird ate. And also the fish ear bones or the otoliths that we find can also tell us um, the, fish, uh, the fish species that they're eating. And so overall in 2020, um, so we monitor lots of different colonies up and down the California coast. And in 2020, the Southern California least tern colonies had um, a, a large variety of fish in their diets, which is actually not a great thing because that means that their main prey species were absent from the waters around them. So these birds had to travel farther to collect um, fish to feed themselves and also bring back to their chicks. Um, which costs more energy and then can lead to low productivity. And so the low productivity seen uh, last year was probably due to poor oceanographic conditions um, and also a lack of young rockfish and anchovy. The Northern California least tern colonies did a little bit better. So they had um, mostly anchovy and these silver sides in their diet, which is a good thing because these fish are very nutritious for the adults and also their chicks. So. Um, we can assume that the Northern California colonies did much better than the, the Southern California colonies. And so, yeah, with that, I'm going to turn over to Rebecca to talk about how the Brant's Cormorants did last year. Yeah, so if you guys remember, <coughs> the Brant's Cormorant is a seabird that looks like that. Um, and so before we get into the numbers, let's go over a little history about the Brant's Cormorant population that breeds on the Farallon Islands which are in the San Francisco Bay Area. <clears throat> so the branch population um, on the Fairlands has gone through periods of growth and decline since the 80s. And these fluctuations have a lot to do with the conditions of the marine environment. For these birds will actually skip a breeding season if conditions are unfavorable. And it is likely that the apparent decline is also due to um, birds moving to more mainland colonies. It was observed that um, some birds have moved in response to changes <clears throat> in abundance to the northern anchovy population, a very nutritious food source for these birds. So um, they really respond to prey communities in trying to get the best breeding success that they can. So the Brant's Cormorant breeding numbers on the Farallon specifically were actually higher in 2020 than in 2019, so they had a really good year. And so as you guys know from our past live streams, we study a variety of colonies on the California coast. So what did we find in their diet in, here in the lab? So for San Nicolas Island, the most common fish found in their pellets was blacksmith, which is this fish right here. And then the most common cephalopod was the market squid, this one right here. And then for Port Hainini, Sand dab was the most common fish, these flat fish right here. And then the most common cephalopod was the California two-spot octopus. Beautiful octopus. <laughs> and then lastly, for the Southeast Farallon Islands, our friend, the Northern Anchovy, was the most common. And then only one market squid. So not a lot of cephalopods around there. <laughs> um, and then for us in the lab in 2020, the pellet with the largest number of otoliths, those fish ear bones, was a whopping 330 rockfish otoliths from the Southeast Farallon Islands. So overall, it was a great year for our friends, the Brant's Cormorant. Mm -hmm. Moving on to the Cassin's Oplet, this is another really cute seabird that we study. So the Cassin's Oplet breeding population on the Southeast Farallon Islands also fluctuates substantially since the 70s. 
they actually suffered a high mortality rate um, during the strong El Nino years. <laughs> and um, El Nino events bring poor ocean conditions to our region and the birds subsequently suffer. However, the population rebounded to peak numbers by 2014 and in 2020, productivity rates for the Cassin's Auklet on the Southeast Farallon Islands were higher than in 2019, with a high success rate of um, chicks fledging the nest. So, um, Cassin's Auklet are actually one of the very few seabird species that are capable of having a double brood in a single breeding season, meaning they will raise a chick, have it fledge the nest, turn around, lay another egg, and raise that chick. And so conditions were favorable enough to support 20 double brood attempts, 50% which were successful. So great year for the Cassin's Auklet. <laughs> so what did we find in the diet? So in compared to 2019, 2019 had a lot of mycids. And if you guys remember from our zooplankton related live streams, mycids look like krill, but they are less nutritious. So finding a wide variety of mycids in these diet samples led us to believe that krill were either absent from the surrounding waters or in very low numbers, causing the Cassin's Auklet to resort to a less nutritious food source. However, in 2020, krill are back in full effect. <laughs> uh, we found so many krill in our Cassin's Auklet diet samples mm -hmm. this last year. Um, specifically, Thysanoessa spinifera, also known as T-spin, was the most dominant species found. And then Euphasia pacifica was the second most common. Both of these species are really nutritious for the Cassin's Auklet, probably um, causing them to have those double brood attempts and just an overall great breeding success um, for 2020. And so mycins did make an appearance. We saw those little guys. However, they were mixed in with krill, so it was a better balance for the birds. Some strange things that we found in our Cassin's Auklet samples were amphipods, these little um, bugs of the sea that they were crazy to find in a few of our samples. And then a really rare find for the Cassin's Auklet in this lab and also just overall are these Thalatians, which are also like known as salps. Um, they are transparent filter feeders and they're actually in the phylum Chordata which if you guys remember from your biology class, species in this phylum can have a notochord, and we, us humans, are in this phylum. So these crazy looking alien filter feeders are actually more closely related to us humans than say a jellyfish or a squid. So that was really cool to find and learn about here in the lab. And so overall it was a great year for the Cassin's Auklet and the Brant's Cormorant, and now, Maria, our grad student, is going to come talk about the California sea lion. Hi. So <laughs> for those of you who uh, missed last month's um, episode, uh, I'm a grad student, first year grad student at San Francisco State University. Um, and I'm looking at the California sea lion diet. Um, so today I'm just going to be giving you guys a quick recap of what we did last, um, last episode. So. Um, we started with, um, this is like, this is, so we started with the diet and, um, we used feces to do this and the feces is collected, um, on the Fairlawn Islands, um, and years before, um, they've actually processed the diet there, um, the samples there, but now we do it here in the lab. So they're brought to the lab and we can, um, we first thaw them and then we clean them in a little washing machine and then from there we can bring them into our lab and um, pick out what we need so that would be scales, otoliths, and cephalopod beaks. Um, these can then be identified to species. Uh, using the measurements we can actually um, know what size fish they belong to and um, get a sense of what uh, their diets consisted of. Uh, so in 1970s, um, California sea lions were depleted, but now they've uh, recovered, and um, so now we use their diet to study the ecosystem that they're in. Um, so for my thesis, that is what I will be doing. Um, 
I will be looking at the relationship between uh, California sea lion diet and the ocean conditions. So if you remember last episode we talked about how there was an increase in sea surface temperature. Um, this increase this increase in the temperature decreased the productivity in the area, so there was less prey availability for the California sea lion. Um, therefore, we want to see these uh, trends that was um, shown. But <laughs> since I don't have too long in the lab, um, I don't really know, have any finalized results to share with you guys. Um, but I can show you guys this nice graph. <laughs> Um, so what it is is down here you can see these are the years and this is um, the percent by number and then all these colors represent a different species so uh, for example we can see in 2009 which is this last um, bar uh, you can see that um, the purple line that was pretty big that is the uh, northern anchovy and then you can see it pretty present in the in the months before and then here in 2018 you can see this long blue line which is um, actually a market squid so this is something that opposed to the northern anchovy we don't really want to see because they have less energetic value for the california sea lions so <laughs> um, that was just a quick little um, recap of what happened but if you guys still have any questions or want to know more um, go ahead and um, let me know in the comments. I will be on my own computer answering any questions. All right, so here's Olivia, and she'll continue with the still plankton. Yeah, thanks, thanks Maria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be talking about um, the last project that we do here in the lab. Um, we collect zooplankton during our access cruises, but unfortunately last year we were unable to collect any samples uh, because of COVID restrictions, but hopefully this year they have some cruises planned to get some of those samples this summer, so that'll be exciting. But yeah, again, this is another reason why we need to look at the diets of indicator species. Um, as Rebecca mentioned, you know, the Cassin's Aukla eat krill, and so even though we weren't getting any of these zooplankton samples from like our tucker trawls, we were able to see their presence in the diet of the Cassin's Aukla increase, so we can assume that the krill probably had a good year. And there were also record numbers of humpback whales observed off of the Southeast Farallon Islands, uh, which is another uh, indicator species because these also feed primarily on these krill. And um, it's really important to look at um, the abundances of krill populations around our coast so we can monitor the health of um, these ocean communities. And so I'll go back to 2019 uh, to talk about those results. And in 2019, we had lots of adult krill. And so years where there's lots of big, fatty adult krill is great you know, for all marine wildlife because, like we said, they're kind of the base of the marine food web. So that was really exciting. Um, and then also, uh, as the ocean warms, we've been getting some southern species that are coming into the, the northern, more cold waters. Um, such as Nyctophanes simplex. So it'll be interesting to see how these uh, zooplankton communities are adapting to the changing climate and what this will mean for their predators in the future. So yeah, with that, we will get into the fun trivia portion of this live stream. Yeah, we have so. <laughs> a set of 18 questions, both non-microscope questions and non-microscope questions. So if you guys are interested, um, would you please say like your name in the chat box or say like I'm interested so we can write down your name and then keep a tally of um, how many you get correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there will be prizes for the top three and it'll go <laughs> first place. We'll get to choose what they want first, but um, we have some krill in a vial. They're pretty cool. It's kind of hard to see there. And then we also have a vial full of preopercular spines mm -hmm. and some otoliths. And then whatever, <laughs> <laughs> whatever order these go in, um, these are some eye lenses in this vial. And then each of the top three will get a sticker and a little window decal of point blue. So 
Yeah. So hopefully you guys are convinced to try hard on this. <laughs> yeah, so cool we have prizes. a variety of questions. Some are kind of hard. Um, some, like, you should get them mm -hmm. <laughs> if you've been tuning in. Okay, yeah. so we have Quinn, Michelle, Joseph, and now Casey. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we also have a question, I think. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Kiel said, I heard warmer water temps are driving younger white sharks inland. Uh, could that have an effect on sea lion diet driving, oh, driving oh. them away from typical areas? Huh, interesting. I don't know if Maria, you want to answer that <laughs> sea lion question? <laughs> but yeah, some is in. Marissa. Cool. So yeah, just let us know if you guys want to participate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can keep responding if you're interested, and then we'll move this to the microscope for our first set of questions. Yeah. Let's see. Flip this. So, Annie. Oh, Oliver. Oliver, hey, yay! Oliver. Thanks for tuning in. Alrighty. Question number one. <laughs> <laughs> These are both two fish from the same family, Anthonopsidae, or the silver sides. How do we tell these these guys apart? Or like, what differences do you see in their teeth? We've got another contender. Okay. All right. Yeah, these were found in the diets of the least turn this last year, and we went over this in our first live stream. But you can also see here some differences. So put in the comments what you see are the difference between these two teeth, these two fish teeth. You can tell, like, these are the mouths of two fish. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell, but. Okay, Quinn said one on top have larger curved teeth. Okay. Long versus short, okay. Let me try to refocus. Bigger, bigger versus teeth. smaller. Bigger teeth on top, smaller teeth on bottom. Mm. One has more heavily oh, grouped teeth. teeth. Oh. Yeah. All right. I would say probably Casey's the closest, um, but you're all generally right. So the top teeth are. Um, from a top smell and their teeth are forked and they are bigger teeth and they come in a single row and then the bottom one is a jack smell and those have these needle like teeth in like two different rows um yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right yeah, so I yeah i'd say from what you can see it's kind of hard to tell on the microscope um those of you who answer it, I'd say those are probably right. Yeah. Where's Marissa's answer? <laughs> oh, Marissa, you lost out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everyone that answered gets a point. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be more selective later. <laughs> okay. So. Question number two. get this in there. Oh, we're close. <laughs> How many otoliths do you see here? <laughs> Let me get this. You guys are doing our job. Yeah, this is what we <laughs> would find under our microscopes. And so we want you to say the number of otoliths that are in this view right here. Yeah, wait till it's all, like, settled. Yeah, <laughs> they kind of moved around. Before you count. Oliver says five. Quinn says four. Okay. Four. Michelle says four. Casey says four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Four, four. Four. And no copying other guesses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you guys. So there are four here. Geodas five. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, That's Rebecca's dad. <laughs> so yeah, so this one here, all these whiter ones are gonna be. Uh, these are gonna be those otoliths. So, kind of these smaller ones here are sand dab. Oh, I do focus. Come on. Yeah, these smaller ones are sand dab, and then this one's a cuskiel, and then this is probably a plain fin midshipman. But yeah, so when we go through these samples, we would be pulling these out. Um, and then the rest of these are just like kind of fish bones. That's probably, yeah, like a vertebrae or something. And then these, um, we also find sometimes um, nematodes or parasites mm -hmm. and then rocks. So yeah, that's our job is to pull these out. And those big things you may have been confused, those are just weird. Yeah, bony like parts. bony parts of fish. Um. I could see how they could get mistaken for an otolith, but we really look mm -hmm. for that white. Yeah, these pretty white. Yeah. Yeah. People are saying Joseph doesn't get it. He <laughs> said three first. Oh, I would say Joseph doesn't get that. Okay. Either. Sorry, Joseph. Parasite. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next question. What are these? <laughs> There's one. Let me find the other one. Oh. Geodas. You better get this. <laughs> what are these here? <laughs> we find this in a lot of our samples. Mm -hmm. They are round, they're hard, like you can't squish them. Fish eye lenses, okay. There's kind of some layers to them. Eggs. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, yeah. There's yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see their fish eardrums from Casey. Ooh. Fish islands from Nicole. From fish. Lens. Lens. <laughs> good job. All right, yeah. So they are fish islands. They kind of get stained from the 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 pellet juices. Uh -huh. Yeah, they <laughs> um, vary in color sometimes. Mm -hmm. Good job, but yeah, Mom. these are in the eyes of fish, like similar to our eye lenses. Um, they're very hard. Yeah. But and we see them in all of our samples. Really, um, we don't really count them. They can't tell us mm -hmm. um, the species, species or anything. But we yeah. note them sometimes depending on the project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I heard fish eye lenses taste like mint. Is that true? <laughs> I, I can't tell you. <laughs> I've never put anything from these samples in my mouth ever. But that would be weird. Yeah. If you're um, eating these, <laughs> if you're volunteering to do that, we have many. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Next question. This is number four. What are these structures called? And we're not going to give you a hint where they come from, because that might give it away. <laughs> but what are these called? Yeah, we find them in the California sea lion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, Cormorants. yeah, sometimes even Cassin's Ocklet will find them. Mm -hmm. The rest of the animal. Wow. Is, oh, nice. <laughs> oh, we got another yeah. player. Chris. Ooh. Chris is coming in. Mm-hmm. Squid beaks, yes. Yeah. Wow, you got it. Wow, you guys it. got it. You're right. <laughs> okay. Proboscis. <laughs> uh, yeah, so these are the mouth parts of cephalopod. <laughs> it's like a nose thing. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, so these, the rest of the animal's gone, but, you know, it's these are the hard parts found in squid or octopus. These are actually from a California two-spot octopus that cephalopod Rebecca showed earlier. But a lot of times these are left in um, the pellets or whatever because they're not digestible. But, <laughs> yeah, Quinn, everyone's yeah. just going to copy you. So. <laughs> Quinn's <let> people <laughs> Yeah. Um, very good. Proboscis was a good guess. <laughs> a little nose. Yeah, but... Yeah, these are the mouth parts. Mm -hmm. Really yeah. cool. Yeah, so they do come together like a bird's beak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think I really knew that they had beaks <laughs> yeah. before working here. Mm-hmm. So that was a really fun thing to learn. Okay, I'm going to switch the so, mode. Number five. Right. So this one, we can you can get up to three points. We're asking, what are the three differences between these two species of krill? There are more than three, but all you need is three. <laughs> But if you get one right out of the three, you get a point. If you get two right, you get two points. So, mm-hmm. This so is not the best example. <laughs> and we have also talked about these two species. One is that T-spin, or Thysonessa spinifera, and one's EPAC. Um, and we did talk about, in a couple of our live streams, the, two di- or the differences we find in these species. So if you can recall any of those. Um, it's kind of hard, hard to tell. We can focus in on different parts. <laughs> Joseph's <Yeah>. lying. <laughs> okay. Rostrum. Oliver says leg size. Leg size. Hmm. We got rostrum. We got number of leg joints. joints. <laughs> <laughs> and you can keep guessing too if you've We got guessed. tail size. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Oh, jeez. Length of rear legs. Hmm. Tail, like the four legs, mandible location. Whoa. Wow, you guys are like really getting into this. Yeah. I love it. Mm-hmm. Trying to, it's really hard to tell. I'm sorry, guys. But. Tail length, location found. Whoa. Lack thereof in bottom Lack thereof. In bottom one. Yeah. So you'll really have to, to get the last couple ones, you'll really have to um, remember what we talked about during our other live streams. But I don't know, you can't tell in the microscope. But I love all the guesses, that's awesome. Yeah. Female and male, size of the legs and the tail. Okay. One has little legs. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so yeah. The size of them. They could just be different species. Mm-hmm. Like they could be the same age. Yeah. Yes. Or like so tucked in I would the look legs. More <laughs> yeah. At the body characteristics. Um, yeah. I think we should just. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Good guess. So whoever said rostrum, you're correct. So this top one is EPAC. And the rostrum is that part that sticks out of the top of their head there. That one lacks a rostrum, whereas T-spin has a pointy one. Wow, it's really hard to do this. <laughs> it's like kind of between the eyes, but you might be able to tell. Oh, there it is, poking up. It has that little nosy part that comes out the top of the head. Mm-hmm. Another answer we were looking for but you can't see here is the denticle and we talked about that in our other live streams it's a little hook that's found on this carapace yeah you probably won't be able to see it on here but this epac has one t-spin does not one more thing is t-spin is called t-spin because it has these spiny parts that come out the back of it you can see that there, whereas EPAC is really flat. But yeah, so you guys are right about the like tail portion. Um, EPAC has this longer six segment, we call it, whereas T spin has kind of a short, chunky one. I think in general, T spin are a little chunkier than EPAC. But yeah, and then also T spin um, can get a lot bigger than EPAC. So, very so good, everybody. Tail. Yeah, so we'll get points for the tail, the rostrum. rostrum. The legs are kind of just like tucked in or not. Sorry, that was kind of a bad one. <laughs> um, good guesses. Mandible well. location, that's a new one. I don't know how we would yeah. look for that, but <laughs> cool. And location. Yeah, that's another thing is these two species can be found congregating together. Um, that's not very uncommon. 
Yeah. Cool. Good job, guys. Very cool. That concludes our microscope section. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to do our non microscope. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> this includes some true and false and just random questions. So, currently, we have um, yeah. Nickel. Nick, 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 Nick Hill, you are in the lead, and then um, Quinn, and then Michelle, Marissa, and Oliver are tied for third. So, <laughs> here we go. And Joseph has one point, to make that clear. <laughs> Casey has two, Das has one, Allison has one, Chris has one. So, thanks for participating, guys. <laughs> okay, so number six, true or false? Seals have ear flaps. <laughs> this was our last live stream, so if you guys tuned into that, I went over some characteristics of seals versus sea lions. Mm -hmm. So, true or false? True or false? Seals have ear flaps. Mm -hmm. It says true. Okay. Doss says true. <laughs> yeah, no Googling, people. True. Mm. I like this true. Oh, here. Sharon's playing now. Ooh, Michelle going off and Casey going off with false. Not following the pack. <laughs> Grace says nice. false. Andrew says false. Oh, Grace, hello. <laughs> Andrew, hello. Wow, we got new Andrew players. False. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Right, Master? Oh my gosh! Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. Mm -hmm. And so, so this is false. Okay. Yeah. So the answer is. Tremble. <laughs> Y'all ready for this? <laughs> the answer is false. False. <laughs> sea lions have ear flaps. Mm -hmm. Do you guys remember? The seals just have the hole. Let me show you the photos. <laughs> this is a sea lion. It's got that ear flap. Ear flap. The seals don't have a flap. They just have mm -hmm. a little hole. Yeah, so that was, <laughs> that was a little tricky because, you know, mm -hmm. seal, exactly. sea lion, it sounds the same. Mm -hmm. So, um, good job on that, you guys. Yeah. Uh, I need to write down Grace's name. Okay, I'll just I'll try to speed this up a little because we're kind of cutting short on time. But um, next question: What is an otolith? Calculators, down. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about this a lot. So, <laughs> so what is it? What are they? I'm ready. Mm -hmm. There is quite a bit of a lag, so that's why we're so, waiting. Yeah. Angela or dad. <laughs> your bones. Grace's ear bones. <laughs> Quinn, ear bones. Nice. Yeah. Very good. They are ear bones. <laughs> So like we talked about, they have two main pairs of ear bones in their head that help them orient in the water. And so that is what we look for to identify them into species. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll still see your answers because of the lag. Yeah. Um, but the next question, tr another true or false. The California least turn, our friend, <laughs> was removed from the endangered species list this year. True or false? You guys know the endangered species list. It's this really comprehensive list where species are ranked um, in seven different categories ranging from least concern to extinct and um, just lets us know the status of each species, how they're doing, um, depending on their numbers. Yeah. Some. We should also mention that this is the subspecies from the whole least tern population, mm -hmm. the California least tern. Yeah, it's a west coast subspecies. Mm -hmm. So we're specifically asking about the California least tern. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Michelle says true, true. Casey, Casey says false. false, Nikhil says true, Quinn says false, Sharon says false, 
Oliver false Marissa false so the answer is <laughs> it is false. Yeah. <laughs> they are still on the endangered false. species list, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. We're hoping in time they can get removed um, mm -hmm. because of conservation efforts and such, but it is yeah. still on there. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next question What is the average size of a krill comparable to, as in body part? We did go over this in our episode about zooplankton. Mm -hmm. if you're paying attention. Yeah, um, there's 85 different krill species, so um, this is just the average of all of them, mm -hmm. not specifically the ones we see in the lab, mm -hmm. all of them as a whole. Yeah, we specifically said a body part that they were mm -hmm. comparable to. Yeah, so we're looking for a body part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's some really big ones out there, there's some really small ones. Mm -hmm. Range. Quinn says pinky. Mm -hmm. Oh, it literally says top fan. I, I know. That's why we keep calling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> top fan. Uh -huh. Little finger from my mom. Mm -hmm. Marissa, wait, can you say the question again? Um, what is the average size of a krill comparable to? And we're looking for body, oh, body part in size. <laughs> Pinky toe. Pinky toe. Ooh. Yeah, those are kind of the answers we're looking for. Like a like body a, part on a human. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Should have specified. Yeah. Okay. So, little, little toe. toe from Sharon. Yeah, it's actually going to be the pinky. So. We talked about this, um, the Antarctica krill are a lot larger than the ones we were showing. A toenail. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so we did talk about this in our live stream, but like probably the average worldwide. Mm -hmm. It's about a pinky, so pretty large actually. Yeah. Yeah, good guesses. So good though. guesses, everyone. <clears throat> so number 10, true or false? We use a washing machine to wash our California sea lion poop here in the lab. True or false? A washing machine to clean poop. <laughs> Specifically California sea lion. <laughs> True or false? Mm -hmm. Look at all you guys. To wash the poop itself? Yeah, to yeah. wash it, to get it to... down or, yeah, to, to clean it. <laughs> I don't want to give away right answers, but mm -hmm. we always yeah. have to clean our samples before we um, go through them to help mm -hmm. us identify those things. Okay, so how do like we do it? Everyone's saying true, which would be correct. <laughs> we use a washing machine. <laughs> yeah, it's like this mini compact washing machine if you haven't seen it in our other live stream. Mm -hmm. It's really fun. It's <laughs> it does the job yeah. for us. Yeah, I used to, so when I was out there, I was sifting through the poop in, On the Farallon Islands. On the fair, like, on the Farallons, <laughs> in like a tide pool of water. And yeah, with COVID, we haven't been able to send people out there to do the processing, so we kind of adapted our protocol to include a washing machine yeah. here, which is a lot nicer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So okay. next. Where are the Farallon Islands located? Yeah, speaking of which. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We talk about them in almost all of our live streams. Mm -hmm. Where are they located? It's a marine hotspot. Mm -hmm. A lot of um, marine wildlife go there to breed. Hang also, out. where we will be stationed yeah. this summer. I'm going She's out this month. <laughs> She's leaving me next week. Um, and I'll be following her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Hence the last live stream. Quinn says, off the coast of the San Francisco. <laughs> Doss is very 20. specific. 28 miles from San Francisco. Oh, God. <laughs> Off to San Francisco. Yeah. What did Oliver cool. say? Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Marissa. Can you Great. Know people that get them. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, Michelle, <laughs> Marissa, Chris, Chris Kill, yeah. Oliver, Casey, Sharon. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. I actually didn't Local. know where they were until I moved up here. So it was very cool. Yeah, they're really Those close. You can straights. see them on a clear day from um, here. Mm -hmm. 
They're really pointy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, good job, you guys. Next. Um, true or false again. <laughs> Fish scales can only tell us the presence or absence of a fish species, not how many were eaten. True or false? So I guess another way to say that is fish scales can only tell us what fish species were eaten, not like... How many? Not how many. I have that clarified. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little more difficult question. Mm -hmm. um, if you've tuned into our live streams that talk about the scales. Goss says true, Sharon says true, Quinn says true, Shell, oh, we're back. <laughs> yeah, so they just tell us what species are present <laughs> or absent. Yeah, very good. Alright. Oh, what is the largest number of- You get that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is the largest number of otoliths found in a single sample? So we this... mentioned this once. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let us know if we need to repeat. Yeah. Technical difficulties, it's tradition. Yeah. Yeah, so we went over this once. Um, I think in the BRAC one. Mm -hmm. The largest number of otoliths <laughs> found in a single sample. Mm -hmm. Ever. Third. Ever. Not including this year. <laughs> or, inc I guess it includes this year, but... <laughs> can't extend. I guess it wasn't yeah. this year, if we can tell you that. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't this year. Sorry, Quinn. <laughs> <laughs> Good job on the number, though. Yeah. That was this year. <laughs> yeah, that was this year. Okay. <clears throat> and we'll give the person who's closest a point. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Good job, though. Yeah. That was good. Good. Okay, so yeah, lost video feed. So Marissa <laughs> is gonna be the closest. Good job, Marissa. Mm -hmm. The number is officially one thousand one hundred and fifty-five. So a lot of fish were eaten in that pellet. Yeah, Marissa gets that point. Yeah, Marissa was like really close. Good job. But great answers for mm -hmm. all of them. That was like a rare thing. Yeah, <laughs> it was sand dabs. Mm -hmm. Um. Not, we didn't do it. We didn't I was a volunteer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Moving on. Number 14. True or false? <laughs> Least turns adults regurgitate food to their chicks. True or false? So regurgitate means um, throwing up <laughs> into the chick's mouth. Um, the food that the bird has gone out and foraged for. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, do the no. California least turns do this? Mm -hmm. Sharon says true. true. Michelle says, says true. true. Chris says, says false. Casey says true. Oliver says, says false. false. Keep them coming. <laughs> Jill says false. false. Quinn says false. Yeah. Well, for those of you who answered false, you're correct. <laughs> you get a point. Marissa. So, so we mentioned this. Yeah, good yes, job, Chris. Whole fish. They don't. Yeah. Those chicks yeah. take down that whole fish. They don't mm -hmm. get a little soft serve. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like other birds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you've seen like birds like doing the mama bird thing, mm -hmm. that's like the bird had eaten it and then the chick is like eating it from. Yeah. What the parent ate. Mm -hmm. There's but a variety these of are, yeah. ways they feed their chicks. They're fed. Oh, see there. So cute. Okay, okay. so good job, mm -hmm. everyone. Next question. Oh, so <laughs> I guess I'll grab it. What is this <laughs> used for? We talked about this in one live stream. <laughs> So this is kind of hard. Featured in one live stream. This moves. Maybe that moves. What do we use it for? Mm -hmm. You don't need to tell us the name. Yeah. Just what we do with it. Mm -hmm. And this one is specially made for our lab. Uh, yeah, and then I've seen ones much bigger than this one. But yeah, they're all used for the same purpose. 
Okay. Get back. <laughs> Separating slash mixing samples equally. Equally. Uh, um, mixing up your sample for bird pellets to separate otoliths and such from bird pellets to separate. Separate. Mm -hmm. Separate water from samples. Good mm, guess. Good job, guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think we got the closest. Cool mechanism to do counting. Is that for this one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that we call it a splitter, and this is used for our zooplankton samples. We put the whole sample in there and we split the sample in half and then in half again till we get a reasonable reasonable um, number of krill to look mm -hmm. at. Um, so for anybody that said like, like separate. separating or like you know helping us you know count because we can extrapolate the number based on how many splits we do um, it helps us with our zooplankton mm -hmm. projects. Yeah yeah so whoever said separate. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, okay Number 16, true or false? The Cassin's auklet nests underground. True or false? <laughs> <laughs> so birds have a variety of ways that they nest. Mm -hmm. um, ranges by species. So we're just asking about the Cassin's auklet. Mm -hmm. Oliver says true, Quinn says false. Dot says true, Casey says false. Let me show them the picture of the Cassin's awkward. False. This is false. So we're talking about this bird here. Michelle says, Michelle says false. Marissa says false. Peel says false. Ah. <laughs> it's so, <laughs> whoever said true, you're right. They nest underground. They excavate this hole themselves with their sharp toenails. And they're, they nest down there. This is one in its burrow with its nest, or mm -hmm. egg. Um, so yeah, birds have a variety of ways that they nest. It's not always in an actual nest in a tree, or mm -hmm. some just do a little scrape and lay their egg. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh. good job, guys. Getting near the end. Mm -hmm. This is the last like answer question. Um, what were the most common fish dropped at the least turn colony in Alameda? I talked we mentioned about this it today. today. <laughs> yeah. um, it's like a family name. Yep. But. So yeah, the most common. It's the most common fish dropped at the least turn colony in Alameda. Mm -hmm. Quinn says silver side. Casey says silver sides. Do you know silver your fish? fish. Doss says anchovy. anchovy. Marissa says silver side. Do you do silverfish? Yeah. That's it's good. pretty good. Yeah. So you're right with the silver sides. We'll give it to you, Oliver, for silverfish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These were the most common drops. <clears throat> um, last Top year. smell, jack smell. Mm -hmm. Anchovy were runner-up, so yeah. sorry, Doss, <laughs> um, you're wrong. <laughs> we found them in our Brant's Cormorant, mm -hmm. uh, right. mostly. Yeah, last so question. So the last question, you guys, and then we have a tiebreaker if there's a tie. Mm -hmm. But true or false, we have to wear these shirts every day in the lab. Mm -hmm. Point blue, uniform. Yes. True or false? And if you would like to purchase your own to support conservation, you can also um, be in contact with us or with Meredith and we will try to get you set up with your very own point blue shirt. Mm -hmm. Sharon says true, Oliver says false, uh, <laughs> Quinn says false, Casey says false, Marissa says false, Michelle says false, Grace false, Nikhil false. <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. quick y'all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we don't have to wear these every yeah. day. We just wear them for the live streams, so mm -hmm. we look professional. Um, but yeah, we don't yeah, have cool a uniform. Mm -hmm. We just have to wear clothes-toe shoes um, for lab safety. 
but we're able to wear whatever we want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, cool. So yeah, let me see if there's a tie. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna tally up the results. <laughs> yeah, thank you all for participating. That was really fun. I'm glad you guys remember a lot from all of our live streams. And yeah, thank you for watching from the beginning. I know I've seen a lot of your names before. There so. is a tie. <laughs> There's a tie between Quinn, Quinn and Nicole. Ooh, okay. So pay attention, Quinn and Nicole. Mm -hmm. This is a tiebreaker. I'm name right. I have no idea. <laughs> this uh, is a tiebreaker. Tiebreaker for first, for and then first we'll place. tell you who got second and third. Mm -hmm. So yeah. stick around. First place gets first choice of prizes. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> um, do you want to do the honors? Yeah, okay, so the bonus question is, listen up. <laughs> uh, this is just for Quinn and Nikhil. <laughs> How many drop fish were collected in 2020? This is the Quarter number. Gets the closest gets to the, the closest. number. Dropped fish. How um. many fish were collected in 2020? Let's see your numbers. This is exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and this then... is for first place. Come on. Ooh, there's a tie for second. Ooh, so that might be a... Yeah. We have another question. Mm -hmm. And then third, I guess that's... Yeah, so that'll be... So oh. we do have... Well, that'll be for third. For third. But we only have three prizes, so... Mm -hmm. One, two, and then... Yeah. And then whoever gets so it. So it's okay. We have another tie from uh, <laughs> Oliver and Marissa. So for stick around. Stick around. Yeah. Okay. Quinn says two thousand. Nikhil, where's your number? <laughs> mm -hmm. You might forfeit this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if we don't see a number, we're gonna have to give Quinn first place and then Nikhil second place. But. I hope they're still around. <laughs> oh, oh, what up? <laughs> okay, wow. yeah, well, that was kind of funny, <laughs> but yeah, you won. So the most amount was 3,732. So yeah, so, that sucks to you. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh. So Nick Hill yeah. gets first place. First place. Quinn gets second place. And then yes. a tie for third. So choose you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. That's funny. Did I be Joseph? Yeah, you did, Casey. Yeah. Just Don't give him that. Okay, so you let us know what you want for your prize to kill. So we got we got the krill. We have the otoliths and Priya Perkles or the eye lenses. What? <laughs> <laughs> Quinn. <laughs> That's our other tiebreaker. Yeah, and then so Quinn will be getting the second, second choice, choice. So after of what you want. the first winner um, claims their prize, then Quinn can claim his prize. And then we'll do our tiebreaker for Which Olivia. And not Olivia. Oliver. Oliver. And Otolith. Marissa. Okay. Sweet. You have. Selected the oats, and now what does Quinn want? Quinn, what do you want from Between. a vial of krill, krill. Oh. or eye lenses? <laughs> <laughs> and you'll also be getting oh yeah, some fun stickers, some stickers, and first, second, and third, a window sticker. <laughs> okay, while we wait for Quinn's mm -hmm. um, guess, eye mm -hmm. lenses, eye lenses. Wow, <laughs> all right, They're Quinn, cool. you get those. And then for the tiebreaker, so. Oliver and Marissa, are you there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do we have your question ready? This will be for the for last the prize. Whoever gets this closest, or what is the question? The it's, number one? It's another number one. Another number one. So Whoever gets the it's closest. Actually, it relates. Okay, you guys are ready. So listen up. <laughs> what was the largest number of krill tails? found in a single Cassin's Occlet sample. So as you guys know, when we do our Cassin's Occlet diet, we count parts because it's digested. Mm -hmm. So this is a tail count for um, T-spin. In one sample. Yeah, so give us, so your, give numbers. us your number. You have to put a number and don't wait till the other side. <laughs> yeah, don't be on a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Curl tails. For a vial of krill oh, that like fits so really well. Appropriate. 
Uh, you already won. <laughs> no answers. <laughs> well, 5,200 versus 1,000. All right. Two. So drum roll. Mm -hmm. Oliver! Oliver. <laughs> you win a vial of krill! Oh. Come to the office and claim your prize. <laughs> or we can send it to Paolo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but yeah, that was really fun, what you guys. The <laughs> oh, the actual <laughs> number, sorry. Is 1,153 tails that we mm -hmm. did. Oh, we actually did this so. record-breaking one. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so cool. good job, everyone. Thank you guys. That was so fun. That was really fun. Um, we were supposed to have a question and answers. I don't know if we can still... Yeah. I guess if you guys have any questions... We could stay on. Yeah, it's our last yeah. live stream. We can do whatever we want. This is as a way off. <laughs> yeah. You had a lot of confidence in us. <laughs> yeah. That I would do. <laughs> yeah, so if you guys have any questions about us, the, mm -hmm. the position, mm -hmm. blue... Yeah, like we said, we'll be leaving the lab soon. We're so sad. Um, yeah, we're going to the Farallons mm -hmm. for the summer to work with um, all these birds. Mm -hmm. so I'm so excited. <laughs> and sea lions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quinn says, what was your favorite part about this job? Oh, jeez. Oh, <sighs> wow. There's so much. <laughs> oh, I got to say... Meredith was my favorite boss. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's the best boss in the whole entire world. Yeah. The best person. It was mm -hmm. a pleasure working under her. Um, but about the job itself, I guess just being exposed to so many different ways that we can study marine food webs. Um, mm -hmm. I had no idea what an otolith was before having this job. And to even key out to species, like a fish to see what kind of fish they were eating just by looking at the bones that was like incredible to me so yeah. that was fun mm -hmm. what about you <laughs> yeah like she said Meredith obviously <laughs> is like the best we love her um but yeah about like our daily work in the lab I, I love like the discovery aspect mm -hmm. of each sample like you know not knowing what you're gonna find and like how that can give us like a little snapshot into the life of that bird or sea lion mm -hmm. that day I think is like so cool because you never know what you're gonna find yeah. But, yeah yeah it's a great job so many good things yeah and I guess that's what will you miss most about Point Blue Meredith <laughs> <laughs> and just yeah just the atmosphere being surrounded mm -hmm. by so many inspiring biologists and projects yeah. it's a great organization to work for uh, Marissa says what was the coolest or weirdest thing found in a sample Ooh, I have to say those salatians that I <laughs> mentioned earlier these so Salps. And then to figure out that they're more related to us than like a squid, that was insane. Um, yeah. I would say, if you remember back to our, what was that, Cassin's Ocklet, where we found that weird like spaceship mm. copepod thing, like mm -hmm. that was so weird to me. Um, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. I had no idea it was a copepod of anything. I thought it was maybe like a, a crab larvae mm -hmm. or something weird, but yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. Um... Okay, what was the greatest challenge with this job? Probably identifi identification <laughs> with the krill and the species of fish. Ooh. Yeah, I'd probably say the identification aspect. Um, some otoliths and some scales look so similar to one another, mm. you just have to look for these tiny differences to key yeah. out the species. Um, that was probably the greatest challenge, but then as time goes on, our eyes are trained, <laughs> and then it's easier. Yeah. I would say probably the hardest part for me is like um, distinguishing species of uh, krill zoea. Mm -hmm. So they're like baby baby stages. Um, they are like really tiny and they, you know, break apart. And you know, you have to look for these tiny little characteristics on them, and yeah, it's really hard. It's challenging. <laughs> um, and it takes a lot of fine motor skills to get those. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that's pretty difficult. Michelle said, when you first started and had to deal with poop slash throw up samples, did you ever feel nauseous? <laughs> um, I wouldn't say nauseous, but um, a little grossed out. Not so much about the actual thing, but the smells. 
the Cassin's Oclip barf does have a distinct smell to it. Mm -hmm. However, our nose is now trained. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's I so barely bad. smell it anymore. I barely um, smell it. But the, the California Sea Lion scat that That's Maria works on, oh my god. That's the worst. <laughs> Thank god she's doing it. <laughs> yeah. That is, like, really smelly, so... Mm. I think as time goes on, our nose yeah. gets used to it. But and also, like, our time... Well, when I was on the Farallons, it just, everything smells like bird poop, and then, like, working with the sea lion poop, like, the first week was pretty bad, but then, like, you get used to it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Kill says, what are you hoping to study at the Farallons? That's a you question. <laughs> so, I'll, both of us are going to be on the um, summer seabird crew doing a variety of projects with the breeding colonies on there. Um, but I will also be studying the Brant's cormorant population that breeds there, this bird. I will be tagging, with the help of other biologists on the island, I will be tagging these birds with really cool biologging tags that not only track the movement of those individuals, but also collects data on the ocean while they forage, like salinity, water temperature, and so on. Um, for a pilot study for a grad project that I hope to continue um, at Oregon State University. So that's yeah. my future at the Farallons. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I will just be joining the summer seabird crew. Um, this will be my first like actual field season, so I'm really excited. Um, mm -hmm. Since this last year we missed out on kind of the field work we were supposed to get. Um, yeah, this would be really cool to like still be working with Point Blue mm -hmm. and like getting field work experience kind of in a more extreme environment, I would say is pretty cool, like on an island. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, it should be excited. great. Mm -hmm. Good nose yeah. training for the Farallons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Can I come visit you guys on the Farallons? <laughs> if only. Wish. Yeah, the Farallons are closed to public access. Only biologists mm -hmm. are allowed on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, we've gone way over our time limit, yeah. so thank you so much for like mm -hmm. sticking around for this question and answer. Mm -hmm. um, we will miss you all. This is it. <laughs> oh, we're still swim there. Are <laughs> yeah, you crazy? <laughs> Wild. Okay. But well, yeah, thank, thank you guys you so much for supporting our live streams. Mm -hmm. um, they have been so fun. It's been a great way to actually do outreach events. Mm -hmm. um, since COVID happened, those have been canceled in-person yeah. outreach. So this was a great time. And yeah. Yeah. as always, these are saved to the Point Blue Facebook page. So you can watch them later or mm -hmm. um, send them to your friends. So they're always available to you. Mm -hmm. um, and this also, is the donation link. <laughs> And also a big thank you to Lishka and Meredith for putting, mm -hmm. you know, these together, like, in the background, you know, them answering Yeah, there's questions. a lot of behind the scenes. Yeah, like, Lishka is our, um, our public outreach person, mm -hmm. so uh, she's helped us a lot to set these up, so we yeah. appreciate you, too. Thank you so much. Yeah, this has been great. Aww. So right, thank keep you all. <laughs> being um, curious about the ocean mm -hmm. and uh, tell your friends. <laughs> And yeah, keep yeah. krilling it. Yeah. <laughs> right, bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. <laughs>